Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadhyasya Yato Nivayat Tarutas Avigyaswara Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yachachi Sago Misha Tamna Sreena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Nalatan Brahmaji. The original, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matravastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Purer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudhyatecha Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kalpatur galitam falam sukamukad amrita drabya samyatam pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam mohur ahoraska buvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. 
It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakataha Krishna. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. And one, and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who's dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu badresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utamas loke bhaktir bhavati naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamalo badayas chaye cheta etar enavidam sitvam sattve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam Muktasanga Sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate Hridaya Grantis Chityante Sarvasamsaya. Siyante Chashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard nod of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, Chapter 17, verse number 42. Rishasya nastam strin padan Tapaso cham dayam iti Pratisandada asvasya Mahimcha samavardayat Thereafter the king reestablished the lost legs of the personality of religion, the bull, and by encouraging activities, he sufficiently improved the conditions of the earth. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. 
by designating particular places for the personality of Godhead. Maharaj, pre- uh, huh? uh, a personality of Kali. Uh, Kali. Maharaj Pariksit practically cheated Kali. In the presence of Kali, Dharma, in the shape of a bull, and the earth, in the shape of a cow, he could actually estimate the general condition of his kingdom. And therefore, he at once took proper steps to establish the legs of the bull, namely austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. And for the general benefit of the people of the world, he saw that the gold stock might be employed for stabilization. Gold is certainly a generator of falsity, intoxication, prostitution, enmity, and violence. But under the guidance of a proper king or public leader, or a brahmana or sannyasi, the same gold can be properly utilized to reestablish the lost legs of the bull, the personality of religion. Maharaj Pariksit, therefore, like his grandfather Arjuna, collected all illicit gold kept for the propensities of Kali and employed it in a Sankirtana Yajna as per instruction of the Srimad Bhagavatam. As we have suggested before, one's accumulated wealth may be divided into three parts for distribution, namely 50% for the service of the Lord, 25% for family members, and 25% for personal necessities. Spending 50% for the service of the Lord or for propagation of spiritual knowledge in society by way of the Sankirtan Yajna is the maximum display of human mercy. People of the world are generally in darkness regarding spiritual knowledge, especially in regard to the devotional service of the Lord, and therefore to propagate the systematic transcendental knowledge of, the, of devotional service is the greatest mercy that one can show in this world. When everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for Lord's service, certainly austerity, cleanliness, mercy automatically ensues. And thus, the lost three legs of the personality of religion are automatically established. When there is sufficient austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, naturally Mother Earth is completely satisfied and there's really very little chance for Kali to infiltrate the structure of human society. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> so everything has its proper way of being used, even gold, even though gold can corrupt people. If it's used for uh, developing and, and, and uh, supporting the Harinam Sankirtan, then it's beneficial. Just like a knife may be used to cut fruits to offer for the deities, so it's beneficial. Or you could use the knife to rob someone or kill someone. So, material things in and of themselves are not good or bad. It depends how they're used. A gun used to stop a criminal from killing someone is good because it's being used in a proper way. A gun used to rob someone or kill someone is bad because it's being used in a bad way. So the gun by itself is not good or bad. It depends how it's going to be used. The same thing with the knife, the same thing with gold, the same thing with your car, the same thing with your body, same thing with your mind, same thing with your intelligence, and so forth. So knowledge Real knowledge is learning how to use things properly in the service of Krishna. So, therefore, there are three things that we have to learn. One is the chetra, the, the body and material nature. What is it? Two, it's uh, what is uh, the process of knowledge. And three, what is knowable. So, we can learn about the body by reading 13th chapter, verse number 6 and 7, 
Mahabhutani Ahankara Gyanam Avyakta Mevacha Indriyani Dasaikam Cha Panchachandriya uh, Gochara And then uh, Icha Dves Sukam Dukam Sangatas Chetanastriti so here we have 24 elements, beginning with uh, the uh, uh, in the uh, Mahabhutani, the four great elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And then Ahankara, the false ego. And then Budhir, intelligence. And then Avyaktam, the unmanifest state of nature or Pradhana. And then Indriyani Daisai come, 11 senses, five for acquiring knowledge and five for performing work and the mind. So the five for acquiring knowledge are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. The five for performing work is voice, hands, legs, anus, and genital, and the mind. And then uh, <clears throat> the uh, Panchachendriya Gochara, the five objects of the senses, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling. So that's the material body and material nature. Then there are the interactions. So what are the interactions? There is Icha and Dvesa, desire and hatred. And Sukham Dukham, happiness and distress. And uh, Sangatas, uh, Chaitana Driti. Sangatas means the aggregate of all these things. And Chaitanas means the living being, the living sy symptoms. And driti means uh, convictions. Okay, so this is a summary of the body. Now above that, the, um, you have the 24 elements and then their interactions. Above that, you have the jiva, or the individual soul, and above that, you have paramatma. This is the real picture of uh, what you call uh, the chetra, the field of activity, the, the material body, and the process of knowing this field of activity, and above that, knowing the existence of the soul and the supersoul and the relationship between them. This is called knowledge. Anything besides it is considered ignorance. So, uh, the knowledge, uh, there's 20 points of knowledge. Amanitvam, Adamitvam, Ahimsa, Santirajvam, Macharya, Pasamam, Socham, Staryamat, Vinigraha. It begins with humility and uh, pridelessness and goes on to, uh, to 20 points. So, uh, we're not learning knowledge uh, in the public domain, reading newspapers, listening to the news, studying all kinds of different books, the history of this, the history of that, and uh, how to program this or program that, and how to be a mechanical engineer, or how to be this thing or that thing. That's not real knowledge. Real knowledge is uh, chetra and jnana and gyayam understanding the body, understanding the process of how to acquire knowledge and what is real knowledge, and understanding the soul and the super soul and their relationship. That is real knowledge. So, uh, therefore, uh, we have to learn how to use the body. We have to learn what is the real process of knowledge, and we have to learn 
what is the jiva and the jiva's relationship with Paramatma or, the, or Krishna, the super soul. Uh, then we can uh, live a fruitful life in which we don't harm ourselves, we don't harm others, and we only do good things in life that are uplifting for everyone. Just like there's the austerity of the body, austerity of the mind, austerity of speech. Uh, all this depends on knowledge. And therefore, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitam Idam Uttamam Pratyaksha Bhagavam Dharma Susukam Kartam Aviyam. This Bhagavad Gita is the king of all knowledge. It is the most secret of all secrets. It gives direct perception of who you are in relation and in relationship to the material world and to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it is joyfully performed and it's unending. It's unending, avyayam. So uh, we are being cheated by mundane knowledge. It's not actually knowledge, it's actually ignorance. And why? Because the end product of, of uh, material, materialistic education is canceling Krishna in our life. And therefore, by canceling Krishna in your life, you cancel any possibility of being liberated from the cycle of birth and death. Not possible. In other words, we stay in the cycle of birth and death. And that is a very nasty thing. Um, therefore, the devotees, understanding how much people are suffering, they make a very, very uh, noble effort of sharing this knowledge with others to help them rise above the ignorance of material life. So here we see the Maharaj Pariksit is the ideal king because he is going to uh, re uh, reestablish the lost legs of Dharma. The Dharma is standing wobbling on one leg only, that's truthfulness. But the other three, mercy and cleanliness and austerity have been eliminated. So he reestablishes the lost legs of the personality of religion the, or the bull. And by encouraging activities, he sufficiently improved the condition of the earth. What are those, what is that encouraging activity? It's Krishna consciousness. It's Harinam Sankirtan. It's regularly hearing and, and regularly uh, uh, reciting the Vedic literatures. So this is explained much more uh, in depth in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where it says, Ya inam veti purusham pakutim cha gunai saha sarvata vartmanopi na sabuyo vijayate. This means, one who understands this philosophy concerning material nature, the living entity, and the interactions of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. So, this 13th chapter, 24th verse, Prabhupada says, just give up material life and turn your faith to me or to Krishna. So uh, he says, from without, Krishna gives instructions as stated in Bhagavad Gita. And from within, he tries to convince the living entity that his activities in the material field are not conducive to real happiness. Quote, just give it up and turn your faith toward me. Then you will be happy. Well, that's the idea of Sarvadharma and Pritya, Mami Kam Saranam Raja. Just give it up and turn your faith toward me, then you will be happy. He says, 
Thus, the intelligent person who places his faith in the Paramatma or the Supreme Personality of Godhead begins to advance toward a blissful, eternal life of knowledge. Then Prabhupada explains clear understanding of material nature, the super soul, the individual soul, and their interrelation makes one eligible to become liberated and turn to the spiritual atmosphere without being forced to return to this material nature. This is the result of knowledge, meaning real knowledge. The purpose of knowledge is to understand distinctly, distinctly that the living entity has by chance fallen into this material existence. By his personal endeavor in association with adore authorities, saintly persons, and a spiritual master, he has to understand his position and then revert to spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness by understanding Bhagavad Gita as it is, explained by the personality of Godhead. Then it is certain that he will never come again into material existence. He will be transferred into the spiritual world for a blissful eternal life of knowledge. So this is the whole program. <clears throat> then understanding who is Krishna it's the whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam if we try and understand who is Krishna and uh, take away or eliminate all the nonsense theories of who is Krishna and replace it with genuine knowledge of who is Krishna, then we have a chance of being happy, of being progressive spiritually in this life and going back to Godhead. So there's so, many, so much false propaganda about Krishna. Just like one of the ladies was telling me that her daughter was in, in uh, I guess in middle school, uh, they were having a class on uh, interfaith studies. So they, they study Islam and Christianity and Hinduism and this thing and that thing. And in Hinduism, uh, they had this question uh, that what can transform itself into different bodies? Is it, uh, is it uh, Krishna? Or is it the Brahman effulgence? Or is it Brahma? Or is it Indra? Or Shiva? And the, uh, the devotee's girl got the wrong answer. She said Krishna. The correct answer, according to the book, was Brahman effulgence. Now, this is complete nonsense. They're teaching Mayavad philosophy as if it's the truth. And they're forcing these kids to, well, by the way, how can something that doesn't have form manifest forms, different forms, you see? The whole thing is, is uh, uh, nonsense, but yet they're teaching it in the school. They're teaching it in the public school, right here in Sammamish and to our own kids. And, and the little girl got confused. And, and the mother spoke to me about it. And, and I said, look, you have to go there and object. He said, this, this is not proper. You're, you're teaching something that's false. Anyway, the teacher herself doesn't know. She doesn't understand anything about Hinduism or Vedic philosophy. She's just following the, the book. And the book is written by Mayavadi. And it's supposed to explain Hinduism. It doesn't explain anything about Hinduism. It explains just nonsense. So we have to object. We have to go in there and say, you don't know a damn thing about Hinduism, and this book that you have is wrong. And I'll give you the information that you need to understand what's the truth. If we just leave it like that, don't say anything, then all these kids, and there are other Indian kids and Hindu kids in the class, they're all going to be misled. Now, 
they're not only being misled by the public school. You can take, I don't know, maybe you could go to uh, the Gurukul, right? Uh, in, uh, I guess it's in Kirkland. I'm not sure. I don't want to say something that's wrong. But I have a hunch that they also say the same thing. That uh, they also would agree that everything comes from Brahman. Anyway, we can, that's something to be researched. But obviously in other schools, Hindu schools, they say that. So, uh, we're in an ocean of misconceptions. And the only solution is to hear uh, regularly this Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Otherwise, we're going to get confused also. So, this uh, position of the living entity is called tatasta. We're in a marginal position due to the fact that we have limited free will. We can even go, we can go completely into maya or we can go completely into spiritual life or Krishna consciousness. That's called, the, we are, we are in, in a marginal position. We can go either way. It's like being, uh, having a house on a border with Canada. So your property is the border with Canada. So you could easily walk across the border, right? And talk to your neighbor who's in Canada and you're in Washington State. So that's, so, uh, the, neighbor, the two neighbors are in a marginal position. They could go either way. Okay? So in the same way, the living entity, the jiva, us, we can go either way. Prabhupada says, since the Supreme Lord is the master of all energies, it is an irrefutable fact that he is in full control of both the spiritual and material worlds. Okay. This is important because the false Sankhya philosophy says, oh, there, yeah, there is a supreme Purusha. But after he creates, he's also subordinate to the law of karma that he created. Now, these, these are all nonsensical ideas. Uh, Krishna is not ever subject to the law of karma, even though he created it, because he's transcendental all the time. So, then Prabhupada, here he says, uh, since the Supreme Lord is the master of all energies, it is, irrefutable, is it an irrefutable fact that he is in full control of both the spiritual and material worlds. The perfect analogy is an earthen pot. What is needed to manufacture an earthen pot? pot? Three things, clay, the potter's wheel, and the potter. The clay is the material or ingredient cause of the pot. The wheel is the instrumental or efficient cause of the pot. And the potter is the prime, primal cause. Similarly, while the material energy is both the ingredient and efficient cause of this cosmic creation, the Supreme Lord, Krishna, is the prime cause. Like a shadow, the material energy works strictly in accordance with the Supreme Lord's dictates. And Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter, 10th verse, Maya Daksena Pakati Suyate Satcharacharam Hetunanena Konteya Jagat Viparivartate This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So what I just read is extremely profound and it explains something that the greatest philosophers in the West and the greatest, uh, the greatest uh, let's say, uh, preachers of, of uh, Christianity or Judaism or Islam don't understand. This, what we just read, most people don't understand. And most people who are so-called scientists and philosophers and, and, and religionists. So how is it that Prabhupada can give such 
simple examples that explain the most confusing things in the minds of most people, including great philosophers and, and scientists. Because he accepts Krishna as the supreme authority. That's why. He has faith in Krishna's Bhagavad Gita. He doesn't need to read any other book. Simply this one book will give all knowledge if we study it uh, under the uh, with the guidance of bona fide devotees. If we read it on our own, we may understand something, but not much. Would you agree to that, Prabhu? Have, have you read, how many times have you read Bhagavad Gita? A couple of times. Right. Do you know this verse that I, read, I just read? Huh? 924. You ever, you ever hear that verse? Yes? Do you understand what it says? Yes? No? Maybe? <laughs> you see, this is, uh, this is, one verse like this is enough to give you what's called an epiphany, awakening, right? If you hear it explained carefully, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I explained it correctly or perfectly, I'm just saying, all of us, uh, this is a gradual process of realization. See? Now, this is only one verse in the Bhagavad Gita, but it's extremely profound. And what I just read, this analogy that Prabhupada gives, is extremely profound about the potter, the potter's wheel, and the, pot, and the, and, and the clay. You see? Okay. So, and then the verse, nine, ninth chapter, 10th verse. Prabhupada says, the sad fact is that although Krishna reveals the truth about himself throughout the Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literatures, the luckless populace cannot regard him as the Supreme Lord. That is the exact factual truth. Krishna has presented this knowledge but even the people hear it, read it, they don't accept it. See? In particular, the impersonalistic philosophers who make tall claims of being bastions of religiosity reduce the Supreme Lord to the level of a mediocre mortal and thereby accrue heavy sins. Such atheistic offenders can never approach the subject of God on their own merit. The Supreme Lord and his surrendered servitors have in various ways clarified and transmitted the knowledge of the Supreme Absolute. But those who offend the Supreme Lord and his devotees can never comprehend such topics. As Prahlad Maharaj says in the Srimad Bhagavatam 7, 5, 30, and 31, Matir na Krishne parata svato va mito bipadyeta grihavratanam Adanta gopir vishatam tamisram punak punak charvata charvananam Nate vidu swarga katim hi vishnum Durasaya ye bahir arta manina Andayatandar upaniyamanas tepisatantriyam urudam nibadha Because of their uncontrolled senses, persons persons too addicted to materialistic life make progress toward hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations toward Krishna are never aroused, either by the instructions of others, by their own efforts, or by combination of both. Persons who are strongly entrapped by the consciousness of enjoying material life and who have therefore accepted as their leader or guru a similar blind man attached to external sense objects cannot understand that the goal of life is to return home back to Godhead and engage in the service of Lord Krishna. As blind men guided by another blind man miss the right path and fall into a ditch, materially attached men led by another materially attached man are bound by the ropes of fruitive labor which are made of very strong cords and they continue again and again in materialistic life 
suffering the threefold miseries. Lord Krishna also describes this kind of person in the Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter, 11th verse, Abhijanati mam mutha manasam tanam asritaha param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram. Fools deride me when I descend in a human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the Supreme Lord of all that be. So here we have beautiful explanations, Shastric evidences, and so forth. But are we going to take the time and the effort to understand it? That's the question. Because you cannot explain this to another person unless you understand it and you have actually digested it and have and the ability to repeat it correctly and in context. This requires a lot of sincere effort and practice and constant hearing and repeating to be able to present this philosophy. It's all here, but it might not be here. So that's why constant hearing is so important. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Oh, chapter nine. It's got everything in that. Yeah. And it, it just it takes them at two. Right? The most confidential knowledge. Right, exactly. Yeah. And it, it takes second text. Uh, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. And you see the purport. It's really long. It's it talks about Narada Muni. Everything is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Bhagavad Gita. I mean, it's powerful stuff. You know, this, this is more than 10 billion atomic bombs if you wake up and actually hear it carefully. It's very powerful. Only Prabhupada could have written something like this. And by the way, his original manuscript was stolen. He had to do it all over again. And his typewriter was stolen twice. Huh? So you had to be really determined to get this message out. You know, if you write, you know, a thousand pages and someone steals it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you have to start all over again. And, and he didn't have any devotees at that time, which, maybe one or two, and he didn't have any money. He had to be really determined to do this, not get discouraged. Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he explained the verse, uh, the same verse he explained, uh, Admaram Chamuna Yoya, to Sarabhu Mutachar, but it's to Sanatan Goswami, he explained it again, but completely different. He didn't, he didn't remember, he himself said that, oh, I can't remember what I said to Sarabhu Mutacharya, but then he gave a complete explanation to Sanatan Goswami. So the point is here, once you've got realization, you know what you're talking about, so you can explain in so many ways. Mm. But, uh, well, he explained it 61 different ways to Sarvabhama yeah. Bhattacharya. Mm -hmm. Bhattacharya was the smartest guy in the whole universe at that time, yeah. right? His incarnation of Brihaspati. Yeah, the, the guru of the devas. He gave nine explanations. Mm -hmm. And then when Lord Chaitanya explained that verse, he gave 61 explanations without repeating anything, you see. So, but Bhagavad Gita is like that, you know. You could write thousands, hundreds and thousands, millions of books on this Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. It's just the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. I, up until now, I can never, you know, 
glorified enough. It's just incredible. Every time Dr. I look Prabhupada. at the introduction, I feel as if I'm seeing it for the first time. Exactly. <laughs> I studied that again and again. I memorized every single word. It's just amazing. Yeah. You can't get enough of it. Yeah. The knowledge that Prabhupada put in there, and then that's what made, really made me convinced that Prabhupada is no ordinary person, different. Yeah. yeah. Nobody can is, really present. If you just learn the introduction, Bhagavad Gita, you have all knowledge. You put everything, everything there. Everything. <laughs> because after, after that, when I started reading Bhagavatam, listening to the lectures and, of Prabhupada himself, and it's everything just it contained within that in, in, introduction. Yeah. It's just like. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But we're very fortunate. We're very fortunate. But to hear from the devotees, like we read in the introduction, it's always good, you know, to well, hear it again. Like yourself, I was looking for this. Mm. When I was 22, I was looking for something like this. My mother and my, my great auntie told me once that there is a book, she said. <laughs> really? Yeah, she told me. <laughs> I didn't know what she was talking about. I was maybe... 10 years old at the time. She said, there's a book, she said, that has all knowledge in it. Wow. If you can find that book, she said, you're going to be very fortunate. Your said, grandmother? My, my great auntie. She's a pure devotee. She was a mystic. She was a mystic. She was a very beauty. mystical woman, yeah. And she, she didn't know the name of the book. She just had heard about it when she was a kid. Now, this is... Actually, I later on, I, I started learning about it. Uh, and, and in Armenian, it's called uh, Vets Hazaria, which means uh, the book that's 6,000 years old. Right? So, but no one's ever seen it. Only a few people have ever seen this book, and those people are great sages. Right? So when I first read the Srimad Bhagavatam, the history, there, and it's talking about the sages in Naima Sharanya, that goes back 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. they, they, they had a meeting for 1,000 years before Kali Yuga, right? And what were they talking about? Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So when I first was introduced to Bhagavad Gita, I was just stunned, you know. And, and right away, I remembered, at that time I was 22, I remember what my <laughs> great auntie told me. And I thought, well, this has to be that book, right? Well, it is. This Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, because Bhagavatam is the continuation or elaboration of Bhagavad Gita. Everything in the Bhagavad Gita is expanded in the Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So then I realized this is the book she was talking about. She herself did not have never seen it. She just heard about it. <laughs> yeah. So it's very interesting, very interesting. And it's all connected, you know, the, that 6,000 years meeting, or 6,000 years ago, they started this meeting. What are you going to do to help the people in Kali Yuga, which, gonna, which is going to start? So they have all these great sages in Namasranya with, with uh, I think it was Sutta Goswami and Sunakarishi. Mm. Uh, and they were discussing how to help the people in Kali Yuga. And they said, it's Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? This, is the, this is the literary incarnation of Krishna. This book, this book right? That's right. Yeah. And Bhagavad Gita is the direct spoken word of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam is spoken about Krishna. This is the direct spoken word of Krishna. So we're very fortunate. Prabhupada knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. so, Hare Krishna, all glory is the Srila Prabhupada Kijay. Hare Paul.